We are in the city of The Hague, the city of the Peace Palace. And the city of the Mauritshuis Museum. And the seat of our government, although this is not our nation's capital. The city of Noord Einde Palace. And of course of the Kunstmuseum. The Kunstmuseum currently houses what must be one of the best exhibitions of Dutch Delft were ever held. Royal Blue. Let's go inside and have a look. The exhibition is really all about the most wonderful objects collected by William and Mary. Mary, of course, had a passion for anything blue and white and gardening, but we'll get back to that in a moment. And the exhibition starts with these wonderful, wonderful pair of vases um, marked IW for Hoppestein, the Morshead factory, and they are from the museum in Douai in the north of France. To the left, we have Mary. To the right, we have William. Let's start with Mary first. In the year 1677, the daughter of the English king, James II of England, Mary, comes to Holland and marries William, Stadtholder at that time, later King William. William was a Protestant and they were asked by um, the English nobility to try and put James II out. He was a Catholic, so we get a conflict of Protestants and Catholics there. Beautiful bust figure um, on this side is the first thing that we see in front of a painting of Queen Mary. Uh, this is a bust figure that usually sits in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. In 1689, William and Mary eventually become King and Queen of England. And they start rebuilding one of the old uh, houses in the country, Hampton Court Palace. And while the rebuilding is going on, they build a temporary structure in the gardens of the Hampton Court Palace called the Water Gallery. And the Water Gallery gets, gets decorated with all kinds of beautiful objects, amongst them some wonderful Dutch Delftware and these incredibly rare tiles um, that were produced at the Greek A factory in the city of Delft were part of the decoration in the Water Gallery behind Hampton Court Palace. The Greek A factory really becomes the supplier of William and Mary for their blue and white, and especially the large pieces. And I really think that under her patronage, the entire evolution from jardiniers, garden vases, went to flower vases for inside the house. There must have been a wonderful relationship between the owners of the Greek A factory, first Samuel van Einhorn, and of course later Adrian Cox, um, between the factory and the royal couple. Queen Mary ordered most everything at the Greek A factory and all the pieces that we see here at this exhibition are marked AK for Adrian Cox. Um, behind me here are some wonderful objects of the royal collections. They were shipped here especially from England uh, to be part of the exhibition and of course this is really what makes this exhibition to probably one of the best exhibitions on Dutch Delft wherever. We have these wonderful objects that were built together in a very interesting way because have a, just have a look at the cover over there. When we look at these vases here, and this is the nice part of having these objects close to each other, we see that that cover part actually sits in the middle there also. So they were playing at the Greek A factory with the models that they had and that the objects that they had to build these really majestic pieces. This is a very interesting case with wonderful objects and they're all decorated with the Tudor Rose. The Tudor Rose was the symbol of the royalty of England since the 15th century and it is on all of these objects. In the showcase with the objects with the Tudor Rose we find this wonderful massive jug. It's really an incredible piece and it sits on what looks a base of a flower vase 
but it has these serpents that form the circle in which the base is set. Other objects in this exhibition also have the same circumference to a base of the objects, and you wonder if these bases were made from multiplicity of other objects. These beautiful objects were made for people in the surroundings of the royal family. They all have coat of arms on them, and the coat of arms all refer to families of nobility, really friends of William and Mary, that because of the uh, love that Mary had for her blue and white, also wanted to have large blue and white objects in their collections. William and Mary were not the only ones, and definitely not the first ones, to have their monograms drawn on Dutch delfware. This is a case with monograms of other royalty and nobility from Europe. This wonderful dish here, also marked IW for the Hoppestein factory, has the coat of arms of the Dukes of Braunschweig and Lunenburg. And of course, this wonderful, wonderful pair of figures, absolutely unique. Queen Mary, King William themselves, marked AK for Adrian Cox of the Greek A factory again. And I have a theory about these figures. I actually think that Adrian Cox, after he took over from Samuel van Einhorn, he gifted these objects to his best client, just to keep that client and to retain them. They're actually embroidered into the wall covering in the blue room in House Ten Bos, the house of the king and queen. Although not particularly Dutch Delftware in themselves, they have some beautiful images of Dutch Delftware. These rugs that have never been shown before, hardly ever have shown before, come from Hampton Court Palace. They're stowed away in, in places where the light cannot damage them. And they were probably also hung at the water gallery outside of Hampton Court Palace uh, by Queen Mary. And they have some beautiful images of 17th century Dutch Delftware embroidered into them. And to balance the exhibition, on the right-hand side, we have King William, of course, a wonderful portrait painting, but in front of that, a bust figure, unmarked, but probably also made by the Greek A factory. And this is from the collection of the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam again. Queen Mary was absolutely passionate about flowers and gardening itself. Uh, she had a dedicated room for her flowers at National Palace of Lowe, um, where they used to live before they went to England. And from that passion, of course, came a um, complete change at the pottery factories in Delft. They probably went from jardiniers, big garden vases, to vases for inside the house, these typical flower vases or vases with spouts. Of course, in the 19th century, these vases were called tulip vases, but that's a 19th century term of something that wasn't really true in the end of the 17th century. At the end of the 17th century, these vases were for all kinds of cut flowers. Now, this is really the latest addition to the collection of the Kunstmuseum in The Hague, a pair of pyramidal flower vases of what probably is the largest size known today. This case is really all about new tastes. When Mary came to Holland for the first time, she encountered all kinds of new tastes. We see salt, sweet meat dishes, which were produced for sweetened fruit, fruit into, in sugars, this wonderful spice box over there, tea, of course, on the far corner, and probably the most important of all, chocolate. I would like to thank you very much for watching this little movie. I would also like to thank the Kunstmuseum team, Suzanne, 
Marita, Jacqueline, for giving us the opportunity to walk around here today when there's no audience around. And I would urge anybody and everybody who has the possibility to come here to come see this wonderful, wonderful exhibition at the Kunstmuseum. It's here until the 22nd of November. and the chocolate.